What if I told you some of the world's biggest rice producers are also its biggest rice importers? That's the story unfolding here, decade by decade. You're looking at rice imports over time. It seems simple, but beneath it is population growth, climate stress, and food security. Because rice isn't just food. For billions, it's daily survival. In the 1960s, import leadership sits in Asia and the Middle East. Saudi Arabia stands out early. With no domestic production, imports aren't a choice, they're essential. Then Indonesia keeps reappearing. A major producer, yet still importing year after year. Population growth outpaces harvests, and climate shocks make self-sufficiency fragile. By the 70s and 80s, the Philippines joins the pattern. Typhoons and policy shifts make imports a stabilizer, not a failure. Next comes Nigeria. Urbanization explodes, diets shift, and rice demand surges. Even strict policies can't stop consumption from winning. Into the 2000s, West Africa rises. Demand transforms faster than farms can adapt. Then the surprise, China in the 2010s. The world's largest producer, and a top importer. Not shortage. Strategy. As we reach today, one truth stands out. Countries change, but core importers remain. This isn't volatility. It's persistence. Rice imports aren't a temporary fix anymore. They're a permanent pillar of modern food systems. These bars don't just track trade, they reveal how deeply the world depends on it. And that dependence is only growing.